Madam Speaker, on 26th of June, I had written to your office requesting us to do the same, to have a motion to discuss what we are discussing today. I'm happy, though I did not get a reply, I'm happy it has come through the channels that it has come. For us to discuss this issue, Madam Speaker, this is the time for the people of Kenya to know that Senate is the upper house. It is what was meant to be by the drafters of the Constitution, Madam Speaker, because they wanted this house to be more an appeal chamber, to be a house that will bring appeal mechanism where Kenyans were not happy with what is happening with the executive, with the other assemblies or with the National Assembly, will always have a channel to come and weigh in and give their uh, uh, contribution, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if the finance bill was to come to the Senate, what happened to this country could not have happened. Those mandamano that were here could not have happened, Madam Speaker, because here at the Senate, we relook into things afresh. We scrutinize again. We look at the proposals afresh by hearing and, and listening to the people. I can give a very good example, Madam Speaker. There was the affordable bill that was brought here, passed by over 400 MPs, Madam Speaker. But when it came to this house, we looked into it. We gave it 49 amendments, new things that were not there, Madam Speaker. What we are trying to say, Madam Speaker, is that if the finance bill was to come, and we should fight for that space, so that anything that is passed by the National Assembly should always be coming to this house so that we can discuss it again and again. And this country could not have been banned if it came to this house, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, on the issue of Gen Z, and I take this time to condole with all those who lost their children, to those mothers and fathers who lost their children. And that's why we are here, we are discussing that everything, every stone must be turned. Whoever acted contrary to the law must face the law, Madam Speaker. And it's also good, because I said, I don't want to be a part of, you know, sensational comments. I want to be level-headed, Madam Speaker. I want to talk without exaggeration. I want to talk from a, a point of fact. And that's why I want to tell people what Gen Z mean. Many people don't even know. I saw an old man, a politician, former politician, saying, when I was Gen Z, you have never been Gen Z, Madam Speaker. Because a Gen Z is a period of which one was born. Gen Z are those who are born between 1997 and 2010, Madam Speaker. Those who are born, like Senator Methu, between 1996, uh, I mean between um, uh, 1981 to 1996, they are millennials, Madam Speaker. And those who are born before that, Madam Speaker, that is 1965. In 1980, Madam Speaker, that is Generation X. And if I was to go to our senior youth, Oburu Odinga, who was born, I think, in 1943, Madam Speaker, they are called the silent generation, Madam Speaker. And this is the generation that are created by American researchers. You are called at that particular, depending on what time you were born and what was happening at that particular time. Madam Speaker, the coming generation will be fire will be more than this Gen Z's that we are saying. It's called Generation Alpha, Madam Speaker. Those who are born between 2011 to 2025. Why are they categorized like that, Madam Speaker? Is what was happening at that particular time when they were born. The Gen Z, they were born when we have social media, we have internet, they have access to information, they understand things as they happen. Madam Speaker, my daughter who is in primary school, came to me after the finance bill was passed by the National Assembly and asked me in school, the classmates were asking, did your dad uh, vote yes or no? And then I asked, what did you tell them? Already she knows that senators were not passing. And she said, senators were not uh, 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 voting for this finance bill. So what this means, it is even those kids that are in school, those now we are calling Generation Alpha or the Gen Z, Madam Speaker, 
they understand everything that happens, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we said we need to talk to Gen Z. And the reason why I've given that uh, definition is because when the president is talking to Gen Z, he must make sure he's talking to Gen Z. And that's why I advise him to shy away from the X space on Twitter, Madam Speaker. And I will explain why. Because, Madam Speaker, when you go to X space, you only hear voices. You don't see anybody. We don't know who is in there, Madam Speaker. We might be speaking to those who have all, all, always been there, Madam Speaker, and not listen to the real Gen Z. And that's why I'm advising him, kindly go to TikTok. If you want to talk to Gen Z, you will be able to see them. They'll see your face, you'll see their face, Madam Speaker. They will even tell you, this is not a Gen Z, this is a grown that man, Madam Speaker. Because if we go to X space, Uko, Maltusi, Mingi, Sana, and they do not come from Gen Z, because Gen Z, they are not afraid to be seen. That's why they came to the streets in broad daylight. They want to be seen, they want to be uh, uh, identified. They are fighting for their people. So I asked the president and the deputy president, go to TikTok, learn how to say tap tap the screen, guys, tap tap. I want to talk to you. I want you to see me. I want us to talk to each other, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want you to take, you to take a pen because we have to do some math. And this is the time that we as a nation, we should now start taking stock of what has been happening. What has been wrong, we say enough is enough. And that is a CDF, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when the former senator or the, the former member of parliament from um, as a, a constituency in Nyandarwa, Mr. Karue, came with CDF, that was the beginning of devolution. What was, he was trying was to devolve services to the people. So when devolution came, CDF should have died a natural death. Because that is devolution. Madam Speaker, and it has been said here, can you imagine the government gives you money to go pay government? That is bursary. It gives you money to go pay a government school. And I want us to do the math, Madam Speaker. Take a pen, take a pen, Madam Speaker. Every constituency in their CDF, they have over 50 million for bursary, Madam Speaker. If you multiply 50 million times 249, a uh, constituency, uh, 290 constituencies, Madam Speaker, you'll get over 20 billion Kenya shillings. Every county has, every governor has an education bursary fund, which they put between 200 million to 300 million. If you do an average of 300 million multiply by 47 counties, you get again over 20 billion Kenya shillings. The billion, over 20 billion Kenya shillings. That is 40 billion or 50 or 60. If you add the GAF, the women rep, they also have bursary. The president has bursary. The governor has bursary. We will get almost 80 billion Kenya shillings. Madam Speaker, why don't we just give this money to schools and make education free, yeah. Madam Speaker? Why don't we take it direct to the schools and make high school education free of charge? I don't have to give an MP money to come and bring it to the village. We have M-Pesa. You know, or we have the, uh, 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 channels of sending that money to schools, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there's an issue of Kera. Kera, Madam Speaker, and I'm speaking as the chairman of roads and transportation in the Senate. We should dis disband Kera and make sure this money goes to the counties, Madam Speaker. It's better to deal with one thief than 290 of them, Madam Speaker. This money, let's go to the governors. We are saying governors are stealing. We are here as a Senate to make sure that they don't. It's better to deal with one thief than talk or deal with more than 290 thieves, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we are even asking ourselves, if the governors, and I, I had the Senator of Isiolo, and also I have had the same cases here, that the governors are not uh, respecting the Senate. Madam Speaker, if the governors are not respecting the Senate, we have tried to find them. They are paying the money within a day. We have tried to tell the police to arrest. The IG cannot arrest them. Why don't we as a Senate also say we are going to change the rules and the laws that we can also emanate with the motion to impeach a governor from this house, Madam Speaker? Because what we do, we all know wait for the MCAs to bring them. So if the MCA never bring them here, this house that is mandated, 
that is mandated to check the interests of a county should also come with a motion to impeach a certain governor who is not respect this house and who is stealing and who is taking money home, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, because I, I, I am a man of few words, Madam Speaker, I would urge the executive and I urge the cabinet secretaries, those who are going to survive, Madam Speaker, from the sacking, because it must happen, Madam Speaker. I'm telling them, focus on creating jobs. It's better to go on a muddy road when you have money in the pocket. It's better to go for the water in the river when you have money in the pocket, Madam Speaker. It's better, Madam Speaker, to go. Uh, 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 what I'm trying to say is, when it comes to development, Madam Speaker, and you had said that, Madam Speaker, it must be people-centric. Go with the money to where they are and ask them, I have 20 million here. Do you want me to make this road? Do you want me to make this uh, to bring water? Or do you want me to create an industry here so that everybody will have something in the pocket? They will say, create an industry and we get money. Then we'll discuss that when it comes to uh, roads, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, picketing that we saw for the first time here, it was very peaceful at the beginning. And the reason why it was very peaceful, because that is when only Gen Z were on the road, Madam Speaker. And they were picketing, taking selfies, recording themselves uh, on camera. And that is to show it can be done. And that's why I'm supporting those who are saying that we should bring along and have picketing corners, picketing roads. We should even have a picketing authority, Madam Speaker, that receives every picket, uh, every petition. When somebody comes, they come where picketing corner, there is an office, there is some people there, you receive it and you follow it through, Madam Speaker. Because what happens when it comes to this place, Madam Speaker? Sometimes people do not even know. Because we do things in, in, in you know, very quiet. And that's why people are worried. They were saying senators have just become clever overnight. No, we have been like this. It's only that they show MPs on KBC every day. We do not share equal platform. And that's why we should also say, anybody who is speaking here, Madam Speaker, if National Assembly is given 20 minutes, we should get 20 minutes on the KBC, which is a national broadcaster, Madam Speaker. Otherwise, they just show the National Assembly, they don't show what we do here. People have to go to YouTube, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would want to talk to the public service, and especially the CS, if he survives, Madam Speaker. It's good to advise him if he still retains his, 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 his uh, position, Madam Speaker. In Dubai, they have a ministry called the Ministry of Happiness. It even have a CS or a cabinet secretary. And people thought the Ministry of Happiness was to have a, somebody who will come to your house and crack jokes and make you happy. No. And that's why I'm suggesting to the CS Moses Courier, in your public service, create a department called Happiness Department. Why am I saying that, ma Madam Speaker? That is to check whether everybody is happy with the services they are getting for the public service. By the time you go to get your passport, Madam Speaker, before you leave that office, there must be somewhere you press to say, I was served well, I was not served well, and this person is very rude. And then it goes direct to the ministry, Madam Speaker. If you go to get your driving license, you must, before you leave that office, where you served well, and then you click somewhere, it goes to the department, not to that office. That office wouldn't even know. They will only know when the PS, uh, the CSs will come to your office knocking, saying, my friend, so many people are complaining. So we get rid of you. Even us, Madam Speaker, I've gone to Israel. And Israel, at the gate of the parliament, when you get in, there's a very big screen that says who is in parliament and who is not. So when you get in there, you'll be able to know whether the person who you sent to parliament to represent you is in or not, Madam Speaker. And it is shown every day. So that we can be able to be here, Madam Speaker, and fight for our people. But sometimes we come in, then we go, we are seen in the village, we are trying to balance uh, things, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would want to tell Gen Z, when you are done with the national government, and I believe uh, so far so good because you have been listened to, go to the counties. Go to the counties and join your senator. Pick their, pick their hands. Go to the counties. Why am I saying that? Because the governors there, they are using the public money that were deducted from you through the previous uh, uh, finance bill. That money was taken and given to your county. Kambu has been given 15 billion within this financial year. 
But what the governors are doing in those counties, they are giving your mothers and your fathers handouts. I'm talking to Gen Z. They are giving your mother sweet uh, potato vines to go plant, handouts, two chicken here, handout, a fish there, handout, so that your fathers and mothers can think these governors are working and they do not look, look at it when these governors are eating into Gen Z's future, Madam Speaker. So that's why I'm saying we should also join hands and ask for accountability. Ask for accountability at the county level, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the issue of employment, and that will be my last point, Madam Speaker. We do have National Employment Authority. We should enhance its mandate. And the mandate is to say, because we are always fighting the wage bill, the mandate is to say, we need to know who is employed where. It should also be somehow devolved so that when you go to the counties, like Kambu County, we pay almost six billion per year or more as a wage bill. People are just getting, a governor gets in, employs all his people. Kambu have had four governors. So every governor has employed everyone. And the next governor probably will do the same, Madam Speaker. So the reason why I'm saying the National Employment Authority should have a record of everybody, every person who is uh, employed by a governor should submit their CVs, their documents, the letter of appointment, when they were employed, so that if I want to check, and it uh, played very uh, well here, Madam Speaker, when we were having the impeachment, we asked the governor, did you employ this person? The governor said, I have not employed him. Oh, I have not employed her. But how can this house know? You have no way of knowing, because the governor is the employer and also the custodian, of those documents. So they only need to withdraw them. They only need to remove them. They only need to readjust. If you said he was employed as a PA, and maybe he was wrong employing him as a PA, they readjust, they say he was an advisor. So the best thing is to have an agency whereby anybody who is employed by a county, those documents are submitted there. So that if I want to know how many people are employed by the governor of Kiambu, I don't have to go and ask him. I have written to him a letter Reminders and reminders, and he has not given the list of those he calls the last on officers, Madam Speaker. But if there was this authority, I don't have to write to him. I just write to the authority, and the authority will give me uh, that information, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, I call everybody, either Gen Z, either Millennials, either Generation X, either the silent generation, which is also in this house, Madam Speaker, because we are lucky we have almost every generation in this house, and that is good for democracy, Madam Speaker, that we should now talk and we should not run for, uh, uh, fight for simplicity, but we all need to do, all we need to do is fight for the future of this country and make sure that the decisions that we make have consequences that are useful to the uh, coming generation, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Senator Montet. Thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. At last I get to talk, I've waited for two days. Uh, Madam Speaker, I also want to thank the leadership of this house, just like